Hello and welcome to Sense Business YouTube channel. Today we'll be covering 3.3 Marketing Mix. It is an IGCC business topic. Okay, so let's understand the definition of market. The marketing mix refers to the set of actions or tactics that a company uses to promote its brand or product in the market. There are four P's which make up the marketing mix. That's pro, price, product, promotion, and place. I've also included an image here because some people tend to remember things well if there is an image. So, for example, marketing mix, marketing mix is made up of product, price, place, and promotion. Sorry, I said that wrong way around. However, now does the marketing mix increasingly include several other P's, which we will talk about in a later lesson. Or we'll talk, actually we'll talk about it at the end of this lesson. So first things first, we'll talk about the price. So price is the amount of money companies uh, or the producers are willing to sell their products or consumers are willing to pay for that product. So that's what price is. So there's different ways and uh, methods of pricing. You could price using cost plus uh, technique that is cost of producing plus a profit. This is easy and it can be easy to adjust the prices if the prices do go up. However, the downside to this technique is that you can lose lots of sales and your price might be higher than your competitor's price. So this brings us to competitive pricing. This is where the product is priced similar or just below the competitor's price. So this is good, it can increase sales but you might not get that much profit. And the other thing is that it is hard to obtain the research and how much exactly is your competitors' prices in all their products. So psychological pricing is another way of pricing where you charge people high prices for high quality products. So products and the price or oh, prices are charged below a whole number. For example, one ninety nine. Uh, some people will use this to charge lower prices for some items in the supermarket, for example, and charge a lot amount of money for the other. There's another technique called penetration pricing. This is where low prices for a new product in order to attract customers from existing competitors. It is useful if you're launching product to the new market. It ensures product will be sold so the product enters the market. The downside is the low initial price can create an expectation of permanently low prices amongst the customer who switch so customers may not want the product at a higher price and they'll just expect it to be the first price. So price skimming is where high prices set for a new product on the market. It can make people think it's good quality because it's expensive, but the downside is that some people will think it is overpriced. Promotional pricing is where product is sold at a low price for a short period of time. This is useful when clearing old stock that doesn't get sold, promotes the business, and you can have a huge amount of sales, but low sale revenue as prices are low. Now we're going to talk about product. So product is the good or service being produced and sold in the market. This includes all the features of the product as well as its final packaging. So you need to remember that. So there's types of, excuse me, there's types of products, consumer goods, consumed by the people, final user of the product. So for example, grapes are an import to making wine. So therefore, the wine is consumer's good, while the grapes would be a producer good. Does that make sense? So if, if somebody has grapes and they want to turn it into wine, the grapes, the person that turns the grapes into wine is a producer's good, and the final product, wine, is consumer's good. 
So milk, for example, TVs, phone, all items in your local supermarkets are all consumer goods. Consumer services are services for people, final users of the service. So restaurants, for example, travel services, services such as flights, insurance, media, and so on. These are all final consumer services. Now, social networking, Facebook, these are all Facebook can also be a producer's uh, service as well because they will be doing advertising for them, uh, for a company. So they become a, both of them. So these are some examples. So producer goods would be produced for other businesses to use. So consumer goods are directly the final product so the customer can use this. But producer goods is where you, a business create something for another business for example machines and raw materials like the example of grapes we use so grapes or raw material a business will sell it to another business who will then make it a final product of wine to the consumers the producers service uh, services for other businesses for example corporate lawyers business consultant these are all producer services so use uh, successful products are unique so you need to remember that all successful products are unique uh, satisfy consumer needs and wants low production costs to make profit quality of the product is kept consistent with the product image so that's a very important point an introduction to market before the competitors so you are the first to come to the market and that makes it a successful product. So why is brand image important? So Dr. Dre's Beats headphones here for you. So brand image is an identity given to a product that differentiates itself from its competitor's product. So if you had these headphones without the beat, you, would, you wouldn't know where it's come from, you wouldn't know its quality, you wouldn't know the sound quality, you wouldn't know what software or so on it's used to create this. So you wouldn't trust it. But because we all know Beats products, we trust them. So it gives it an identity. It's given an identity to this headphones. Because we can call it Dr. Dre's Beats headphones, for example. And then brand loyalty is when customer keeps buying the same brand again and again instead of switching over to competitors. So there's many other markets that sell headphones too. But uh, some people constantly want to buy Dr. Dre's because they have, they produce good quality and the sound way is way better than any other headphones, especially for mixing and listening music. The advantages of brand image is that consumer recognizes their product, like I just said. So their product can be charged higher. Dr. Dre's beats are charged higher. And because they are well known. So if, if these were if the Dr. Dre was a less known brand, then it would be a lot less. But now for these pair of headphones you'd be paying at least two hundred pounds. Easier to launch new products. So if Dr. Dre launched new product, it would go sky high, it would be very successful. For example, Apple is one company that anything they produce, it goes straight away, number one, and the product becomes successful, like Apple Watch, Apple Mini, Apple iPad, Apple phones, anything they get their hands around becomes successful. And that is because of the brand loyalty, brand image, and the company. So that's what, that's why brand image is important so role of packaging so what role does the packaging have as you can see i've put different products for you here just to see so it protects the product that's number one so imagine that cake being on a without any packaging it would be just on on what on nothing and you would get dust everything on that and then i don't think anybody would want to eat a dusty cake easy for transportation so Imagine that cake without that packaging. How would you get that to the customer? By the time you got to the customer, there will be about 50 million flies and dirt. Everything would be on top of that cake. So it wouldn't be a very tasty cake, would it? Also, the product can be easily 
use these a little bit because if you you don't have half the cake you can leave the rest in the fridge um, without ruining it so it promotes the product and brand image as you can see it, it it's got a picture of the product it's got a little bit about the product what it is and it's got some little bit description the logo everything so it, 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 it promotes the business the brand and what's inside the package it attracts and appeals to customer logos and images used so as you can see all these products have logos images used it kind of attracts you for example this one it's particular nicer and this one for example it's packaged well and it's got different images it, it kind of attracts customers to what it, it, what it is that's inside it and what sort of characteristics will eat eat it for example and uh, constant with brand image and of the product so high product and fancy packaging is all very important because customer the more fancy packaging it is the more it means about the product for example look at this product so instead of tearing it apart you can just pull it open and take what you need and then push it back in to close it so things like that will attract customers so now we'll know about product life cycle this is very important so there's four stages that we need to know so that's introduction growth maturity decline and then we have shake off shake out saturation are the are the three points that we're going to talk about so introduction is where low sales high cost per customer financial losses innovative customers few if any competitors so this is where all this happens the growth is where increased sales so your sales are starting to go up and cost per customer starts to fall and uh, profit rises increase in number of customers more competitive so everybody sees that you're doing well so more people are trying to get into the market to try and make money alongside to your product so maturity is where the peak sell this is the top bit where you make this is the saturation where you make the most money the most sales so cost per customers the lowest profit is at its highest you have the mass market uh, you have a stable customer number of com stable number of competitors and you have a huge customer base and you are kind of the lead in the market and then we have decline this is where sales start to fall cost per customer becomes lower profit falls customer base contracts number of competitors Full. So as you can see, this is the sales, this is the time, and this is the product life cycle graph for you. Uh, make sure that you understand this well. If you need to pause the video, just to read them again and again, so then at least you have an idea of what this graph means. So now, how can we extend the product life? So we could introduce new variation of the original product so a lot of businesses will do this so they'll create new versions of the same product or they will sell the product into a new market for example distribute it to another countries a lot of businesses do this so where when they see that the product demand lowers for example in the united kingdom they will start taking their business to india afghanistan pakistan um, sri lanka Bangladesh or wherever they make the money so increase and create new advertising campaigns so they will start advertising or create new campaigns to, to extend their product life or they will bring the prices low to get rid of as much products they can and make changes to the product new packaging new taste new colors they will do these because some customers let's say they have a blue iPhone and they want an red iPhone so if you change the color they might come and get the product because of its color okay so now we're gonna talk about the promotion so the promotion is marketing activity used to communicate with customers and potential customers to inform and persuade them to buy a business product 
So this is what cross promotion is. The aim of promotion is to increase awareness, create interest, generate sales or create brand loyalty. Aim of promotion is to increase sales and market share, create brand image, introduce new products to the market to compete with the competitors. So there's different ways we can do promotion. I'm sure you see hundreds of ads all over and if you're watching this video you might be seeing some ads right now on the left or right hand side of this video so there's lots of different ways of how promotions are, are done so there's types of different promotions so advertising and sales promotion so businesses will use these two tactics so this is advertising uh, it's a big billboard with the product so this will be a way of advertising and this this is also advertising because you're uh, showing your for example coca-cola tdk they're all using a well famous i think that's london square somewhere in london uh, they have displayed in a big screen their name so something everybody can see there's millions of people will be going down thousand not million but thousand people going to, through here a day and they see a big brand in a big screen it's quite fascinating and attracts their attention and then sales promotion is where we have offers so for example 50 percent off or buy to get one free or buy one get one free that is what a sales promotion is we'll go into more detail now so advertising can be done in two ways so you have informative advertising you give audience detailed information about the product for example this bottle of uh, absolute vodka you just have absolute perfection and then there's loads of information here so that can be boring and not many people will read it or you can have persuasive advertising what this does it tries to persuade audience that they need the product for example it says butter taste butter better help so what that means is that it kind of tells you that you need this butter to have to be healthy or this butter is good for your health it kind of persuades people to buy it so then there's different advertising techniques for example you could have local newspaper you could advertise on local newspaper so it's cheap lots of information permanent copy not everyone reads so that's a downside actually so not everybody reads newspaper anymore so that is a downside so local or national television seen by many people if you can be interesting choose which time to advertise so you could select the time to advertise the video uh, your advert but it can be very expensive and no target of audience only good if you want to attract everyone so that is the downside of local or national TV advertising and then we have internet advertising this is becoming very popular in nowadays in today's world actually and the advantages are that it's wide coverage control of message reputation means that the message can be communicated effectively can be used to build a brand loyalty you can target specific audience and these are the disadvantages often expensive if you're a big brand and you're trying to get off the world so it can be very expensive and personal so it sometimes you cannot control who who sees your message it can be anybody and then one-way communication there's lacks of flexibility limited ability to close sell so you could have hundreds of ads but you not be able to close a sell with a client or a customer there's ways of advertising in specialized magazine where different car um, characteristics will be buying for example car magazines sport magazines um, makeup magazines there could be all sorts of magazines which in which you could advertise to help you get more customers or you could use social media you can target specific audience because Facebook so if you want to show your uh, product to somebody that's between age 18 to 25 and as female you could do that on social media 
uh, billboards is another way of advertising so you could reach wide range of locals increase awareness and then you could also use leaflets it is cheap it's permanent copy it's a range of audience so given to anyone but the downside with leaflets is that you don't know if somebody's going to read it or just going to take and chuck it in the bin. I've seen that many times where the McDonald's workers will give you out a leaflet in the town centre. and I've seen many people just throwing it straight in the bin. And the other form of, um, of promotion is sales promotion. This is where price reduction, so reducing price to attract customers, so gifts, so you could give gifts for example toys that come in cereal boxes uh, boxes so i don't know if you, in the united kingdom i don't know if you do in your uh, in the country you might be watching this video but in the united kingdom there's some boxes of cereals they will come with the uh, toys inside it and kids go crazy about that or for example mcdonald's mcdonald's have happy meal in the happy meal there's toys and also toys and things the kids like so that attracts kids to buy more Happy Meals and they make profit and the customer is happy because they get a toy. So competitions, uh, products that come with entry to a competition such as winning a prize. So you could have products if people buy it, they could win a car or an airplane ticket or a holiday or something like that point of cell display in demonstration so you could have somebody uh, you could hire agents to go to local retail sh uh, stores and show product people how the product works let them display it so people can see it in supermarkets and uh, their local markets after sale is an important thing so customer like buying from shops that offer repairs and maintenance and uh, after service to help them if there's if there anything goes wrong with their product because at the end of the day nobody wants to buy a product that you buy and then after two days you go back to the shop and nobody's there to help you and so on so free samples you could give people free samples to encourage them to try your product and if they like it they can buy it this is used in town centers supermarkets and places like that to encourage people to buy your product and to increase awareness in a way the advantage or advantages of sales promotion is that it maintains high sales throughout the year it encourages consumers to buy the product it's more competitive and you're doing something that helps people see you and helps people save in a way as well so you're, you might not be making too much profit, but you'll be making lots of sales, so that's a good thing. And now we're going to talk about place. So place refers to how the product is distributed from the producer. Producer is someone that produces the product or the maker, the business, to the final consumer. As you know, consumer means customer. There are different distribution channels that a product can be sold through. So it's important to make products available in the right place at the right time in the right quantity. If you ever want to be a businessman, you need to remember this quote. It is very important to make products available in the right place at the right time in the right quantity. You always need to make sure that you follow this steps or this deadline or go by this quote. So please. So distribution is achieved by using one or more distribution channel. So this includes retail, distributors, sales agents, direct via buying or selling of products online, services or over the internet. Internet is becoming very famous nowadays for shopping as you are aware because you're a business student. I don't really need to explain that to you. Internet is a massive thing in now today's world. Even look at it, you're studying from the internet right now if you think about it. You're obviously watching this video on my Sense Business YouTube channel or Sense Business website. So that internet is doing you a favor and it's becoming well popular 
with students, for shopping, for studies, for everything. And then there's a distribution channel of wholesale. Just so that you know, a distribution channel is all, uh, the distribution channel can be defined as all the organization through which a product must pass between its point of production and consumption. So that's what distribution channel is. Just in case if you wasn't sure what it meant, I've put it here for you. Okay, so producer to consumer. So what does it mean when a product goes from producer to consumer? This is where the product is sold directly to the customer. This is when the manufacturer sells the product to the cons customers who are the final user of the pro product. So there's so there's no people in the middle involved. It's the businesses between the customer and the consumer. It is simple, suitable for some types of products, lower price for cons consumers. But the downside is that not many customers live near the factories, so it is difficult for them to buy the product. Not all producers are online, so you can buy from them, and not all producers offer the option for them for consumers to go buy from them directly uh, the transporting products to consumers can be expensive and not worth it and uh, may not be able to, may not be suitable for some type of products for example veg vegetables you could uh, you could not buy that from a farmer or things like that, or products that expire quickly so, producer to retail to consumer. And this is where the producer sells product to retail, who then sells it, it the product to the consumer, the customer. So, lower distribution costs only need to trans only need to transport to retailers, not individual customers. And then the downside is that the business loses touch or contact with the customer, so you'll no longer have. That connection with the customer because the retailer is now dealing with the customer and you are dealing with the retailer so producer to wholesale to retailer to consumer so a producer sells to a wholesaler a wholesaler sells it to retailer and then a retailer sells it to you the customer so wholesalers will divide large bulk of products into small ones for smaller retailers to buy so it reduces storage costs for manufacturer and retailers so it reduces transportation costs the small retailers can buy small box bulks from wholesalers so products don't expire wholesalers give advice to small retailers on what is selling well the downside is the price is higher for retailers and consumers because they will buy product from the producers and add a little bit price and then they'll sell it to retailer who will also add a little bit price to sell it to the consumer so the price is going to be a lot a little in some cases a lot higher wholesale may not sell very every product long time long term until product reaches consumer which may be bad for fresh food or uh, food or products that expire fast producers to agents, to wholesales, to retailers, and then to the customers. This is a long chain of production. This, uh, this is normally used in other countries or if you're trying to m distribute your product to all products to f foreign countries, countries outside the country the product is produced in. So agents sell the product on behalf of the manufacturer in another country so the manufacturer doesn't have to contact foreign wholesalers directly so the agent have more knowledge about the business in that country because they are possibly are from that country and they have some people in this country so they they have a better knowledge of both countries and the business so it saves time for uh, the producer as they don't have to take care of overseas distribution but the down point is that distribution has to pay the agent commission and fees and may lose control of how the product is sold 
to the customer. For example, Toyota uh, had loads of car cars that were sent to Syria. <laughs> they were used for bad purposes. So you need to ensure, and it's very hard to control once you give or send your products to overseas countries. And like I said earlier, we'll talk about the other piece. So we have covered the price, we have talked about promotion, we have talked about place, and we have talked about products. We talked about pl promotion, price, product, and place. And now there are some more pieces that I want to talk to you about. The physical evidence evident so that's how we reassure our customers for example we could have impressive buildings well-trained staff we could have great website and then another P is that who are our people and are there skill gaps can what as a what we as a business can do to ensure that our people are well trained and they have the best skills to do the jobs that they are doing Partners, are we seeking new partners and managing existing partners well? So these are all the P's and there's probably some more that you could find or may come across that have been added to the marketing mix to make it more effective. But remember that we, we only need the four main P's for the exam. So now we're going to talk about technology and the marketing mix. The market, the internet is also used for promotion and advertising of product. So the internet and other technologies used by businesses to market and sell goods and services to customers. For example, e-commerce includes online shopping, internet banking, online ticket booking, online hotel reservation, this is all under that one category. The advantages of business advertising on social media sites uh, are that it can target specific type of consumers, advertisement and information can be edited and updated quickly. It's quite cheap in some cases. And customers may find online ads annoying, so that's the downsides. Imagine going to a site that's full of ads and you just want to get some information out of that website, but it is full of ads, so that can be annoying. Pop-up advertisement can cost money. So a lot of the adverts that you see, a lot of companies will be paying a huge amount of money for you to be able to see them. So advertisement can be edited by audience in a bad way. Internet m memes. So sometimes advertising can result in a bad image for the company or not how the advert was intended. So business advertising on their own website. So some business have the option to advertise on their own website. The good side is that you don't need to pay for ads if you if a website already hosted. Ads can be changed, updated at any time, can provide more information on their products on the website. So if you have a well-known business for example apple you could advertise your new products on your website and millions of people will start to order and buy from you the downside is that fewer viewers so even if you're apple for example you will only have the views that you normally get and not many people might so m might not get a notification about the promotion so they might not come to check the website, there will be less views, uh, not, may not be seen by most people, so not many people will see the advert. And now question time in, I have got a prize about you, because I've, because I've talked about iPhone so many times in these videos, I would like to give away one iPhone, and I think that would be fair to do that, because I don't know if you know that, but I am making some sort of little money from these vi uh, YouTube videos and my website. So it would be nice of me and it would motivate you to study more if I give away one iPhone. So I've decided that I will be giving away one iPhone. But to get that iPhone, I would like you to describe marketing mix, 
how many marketing mix piece can you think of so you could include the seven that we have talked about or you could think of some many more and what is technology important that's supposed to say why is technology important so what you need to do is you need to answer these three questions and leave a comment in the section below and I'll pick one person from that so you have till five I'll give it five weeks before I select one person so make sure that you comment and answer these three questions below and if you have any questions also make sure you comment that in the questions below so don't miss out on the iPhone I want to see if there's a many people that want an iPhone or not I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next video take care for now